Good morning everybody. We're going to have a good look at parameters and how they are used. So we're going to have a look and a careful look at the difference between value and reference parameters. We're going to see which parameter we, we must use in which circumstance. So in Visual Basic and most programming languages that we get there's really two ways to pass parameters either by value then a copy of the value is passed or by reference when I pass something by reference the address is passed in VB we will use the keyword by ref or by val let's just have a look at a few terms that we need to use um, where we are calling the procedure or the function we talk about parameters as being the actual parameters or arguments so when I use the term actual parameter or argument it means the call statement formal parameters would be the parameters specified in the function or procedure header okay so there's two terms that you need to use first of all in a program formal parameters actual parameters and now there's two ways of passing the parameters either as value parameters or reference parameters and where we calling the procedure there's nothing we can do it's the person that coded the functional procedure that specifies whether formal parameters would be by value or by reference value parameters when we use value parameters data is sent to a procedure or function using the parameters now the parameter data would be used to carry out the task of the procedure or the function the actual parameters so these those in the call statements would normally be a variable but here it can be a literal or a constant as well and then I will always use by val for these formal parameters so the word by val the reserved word in VB specifies I get this parameter and data is sent to the procedural function and I'm only going to use it reference parameters I'm only going to use that with a procedure reference parameters allows me to send back information using the parameters the reserved word by ref is used and this is a way for the procedure to send back information take note that functions will never under the correct circumstances use reference parameters they will only send back one value via the function itself so only procedures should use reference parameters to send back two or more values so let's have a look at a very simplified um, example of what is a value parameter and what's a reference parameter let's say I've got a document that I would like to give to my students I'm not going to give them the original I'll most probably make photocopies and give the photocopies to everybody what they do with the photocopy is up to them and that's exactly the same as value parameters the button event procedure or the program will give data to a function or procedure and what the function or procedure does with that data it's up to them never ever does the function or procedure give back the data that specific data so it's a one-way situation the program gives data to the functional procedure and then that's it when I pass data by reference it's as if I 
wrote something and I want to check I want to allow somebody to go check maybe my spelling my editing anything like that um, so I'd give them the original document and on that document they can now scribble they can do whatever they want to they when they're done they're going to give me back that document with the changes obviously and this is sort of the same idea as reference parameters so it is extremely unsafe to give those parameters to a functional procedure remember under normal circumstances one person would code a function or procedure and completely another person would call those functions and procedures you might not even know the person that coded it you don't know who coded the minimum or the square root function in the math class it happened long long ago an extremely unsafe way to do so we try and avoid this only use it when it's necessary so by value then a copy is given to the functional procedure and this copy is actually deleted in memory we'll see an example shortly regarding this with by, val by reference the address of the parameter is given to the procedure or func procedure actually and this allows the procedure to change new data in the variable and these changes will then be permanent in the program so when will I use by value whenever a procedure or function must receive data I will always use by value so that a copy of the data is sent only when a procedure must send back two or more items will I use reference parameters functions will not use it only procedures and only for the data that must be returned by the procedure so this just reiterates the point I've made let's go have a look at some examples now so I'm going to have a look at what happens to value parameters in the memory of the PC and then we've got a few practical questions to look at thereafter I'm going to look at what reference parameters does in the memory of the PC and again practical questions and then I'm going to have a look at possible coding problems so things you might encounter over here I've got a program that uses a function the function gets a number and it doubles the value and returns that number for simplicity on line 26 I'm only assigning data I'm not getting data from a text box so we can follow the execution of this program really really good so line 23 if the program would be executed those two variables would be created in memory num1 and result and in VB they would get an initial value 0 each line 26 if that executes 10 would be stored in the variable num1 num and next we're going to call the function as soon as the function is called num1 is sent as a value parameter so a copy of this is made and the copy is passed to the function this function declares then a variable called answer and initially it would have a zero value soon as I've got a variable that's declared in VB it gets a zero value so line 14 would have the data looking like this if the program advances to the next line line 16 calculates 
num 1 times by 2, so 10 times by 2, and stores the answer, the result in answer, in the answer variable. So there we've got answer that's saved. The moment that line 18 executes, the data is sent back and all parameters and local variables are deleted from the memory of the PC. On line 29 where we called the function we specified the data must be stored in the result and that's then exactly where the data would be stored. So the value returned from the function would be stored in result and now when I go and display the data 20 would be displayed in the label by line 23. Okay, so a few things to notice. <clears throat> I went through the program as if I'm the I'm the real program executing. It would start with the button event procedure and execute these steps. So line 23 would execute first, then line 26 then line 29, but line 29 is a call to another function. So control would immediately jump to the function. Execute line 14, then execute line 16, execute line 18 to send back the value and line 19 would end the function. Control will then immediately come back to where the function was called. It now knows because I've coded it where to save the result of the function and the line after the function call would execute which would display the label value ends up will end the piece of code and goes back to the user interface okay. and then second of all whenever a function is finished all the local variables and parameters are deleted from memory. Okay, so question now to you. Pause this program. What would be displayed in the label? Okay, you must pause it now so that you can work out the answer. The answer would be 2. So over here 10 is assigned, 10 is sent to number 1, line 13 will execute 10 minus 8 will be 2, store 2 in answer, line 26 will store 2 in result and result will display the 2 for me. Next question. Again pause the program have a good look at it, what would be displayed in both labels this time around. And label 1 will display 8, label original will display 10 because it displays the value stored in number. Next program, have a careful look now. Remember the data is deleted as soon as the function is finished. What would be displayed? Pause the program, have a look. This time around, label original will display 10. I think this is the most important change. Let's go have a look. So line 21 will declare the two variables both store 0. Line 24 stores 10 in num1. Line 27 calls the function sends 10 to num1. Line 11 declares answer as a variable so stores 0 currently Line 13 takes the current value of num1, so 10 multiplied with that with 10 stores the result in num1, which would be 100. 
Line 14 takes that 100, copies it to answer. Line 16 returns the 100. End function will delete num1 and answer. Goes back to the program. Line 27. This stores the value that's returned 100 in the variable called result. So line 30 will display 100. Line 31 will display 10, the original value that was stored. It is extremely important that you understand exactly what the program does. So let's go have a look. Let's say we are the program. Somebody clicked on the button and we are tracing now through the program like the computer would do. We start at line 19 because that's the start of the button event procedure. Next, line 21 executes. And the two variables are created in memory. They both have a zero starting value because that is what VB does. It assigns a zero value to all the number variables. Next sequence means line 24 will execute next. This assigns 10 to number. Number would now store 10. Next, calculate result, the function will execute. And at this stage, control went from here to there, to there, to this line. The moment that a function call executes, then control immediately jumps way over there to the function itself. There's now lots of lines scribbled, but that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, function starts. Number is sent by value. What does that mean? It's copied here to the function. Next, I am starting with a function and first of all, answer is declared. And this really causes answer to be stored here for the procedure. Let's just make that a little... No, it doesn't look so good. Answer is stored for the function and it stores the value 0. So next, line 13 executes. Program jumps there. Line 13 says Take what is stored in num1, that's 10, multiply it with 10, store that answer in num1 again. So that causes num1 to store the value 100. Let's just see if I can. Okay, num1 stores 100. The line that goes next, line 14, so it would be executed next. Let's add another line there. That says, take what is stored in num1, copy it to answer. And that's exactly what would happen. Now, line 16 executes. Line 16 says, take answer, the 100. Ooh. A very skew 100 but no, 100 nonetheless send that to where the function is called end function would execute and this is going to delete the current variables in memory so it's deleting answer in num1 control will return back to where the function was called and this is going to save the hundred that's returned 
in the variable result because we specified it. Okay, line 27. Thereafter, line 20. Uh, I doesn't have a statement, but 30 and 31 will execute to display 100 in the result label and 10 in label original. There's now many lines on this page, but it's really important that you understand how exactly the program would execute and what it would do. Next, we can have a look at question 4, another program with a value parameter. Be very careful. What's displayed in this program? Pause the program, really have a careful look at the answer. And the answer is that label result will display 0 and label original will display 30. Why 30? Your answer lies over here on line 26. Trace through the program carefully as I just explained. Line 26, the result returned by calculate result function is saved in number 1. So with line 29, displays result, which remains 0 throughout the program. Line 30, displays 30. If we now look at the last program, Carefully have a look at the program again, pause this video, determine for yourself what would be the result, and then look at the answer. Okay, so let's go have a look at the program results. Label result will display 13, label original 10. Congratulations if you got the right answer. Then it means you understand what's happening in the program. If I go evaluate the program, line 13 stores, num 1 plus 3, so 10 plus 3 in answer, then num 1's value changes, return will send back the 13, end function will delete num 1 and answer from memory, The 13 will be stored in result line 27, line 30 will display the 13 and line 31 will display the original value of num1, 10. Congratulations as I said, if you got this you meant that you're doing well, if you didn't get the right result. Pause the video, go back to where I explain a program trace and then carefully go through the program like I did with the variables and what's written down where so that you have a careful look at the program. If we now go to reference parameters, we also need to know exactly what happens to them in the memory of the PC. We want to code a program to calculate half and a quarter of a number and we want to keep track of the program in data in the memory of the PC. So line 21 would execute first and line 22 and this would de define the three variables num1 half and a quarter to store the data. Num1 is an integer Half and quarter would be double, so the sizes of those variables in memory would be different. Next, line 25, a size, assigns 12 to number 1. Then the program gets to the part, line 28, where the procedure is called. When this procedure is called, num1 is a value parameter, so that value is copied to the formal parameter. Half and quarter are reference parameters. 
So that means there's not a little block in memory that gets opened for them. They really just say, oh, this is where we will get half and a quarter. So now when the program calculates line 15, half is equal to num1 divided by 2, the actual data gets stored in the variable declared for button calculate half. Because this reference points there, we'll use this variable. If the next line executes, line 16, then num1 divided by 4 will be 3, and that would store 3 in the variable called quarter. Next, end sub will execute. End sub deletes all the, there's no local variables, but all the formal parameters. Control returns to where this function was called, and now when it displays the data, it would display 6 in label half and 3 in label quarter. Take note, for the reference parameters, there were never a variable created for the formal parameters. This half formal parameter simply pointed to the variable that was created previously for button calculate. Let's now go have a look at the first question. Carefully look at the program, what would be displayed in both labels. Pause and work out. If we go have a look at the answer, then label sum will display 22 and label product will display 120. Why? This line over here takes 12 and adds 10 to it and the answer gets saved in sum. Line 70 takes number 112 and multiply 10 with it. So when the procedure ends, sum will store 22 and product will store 120. Let's look at the second program. And now things becomes a little bit more difficult because I simply call the, the formal parameters result 1 and result 2. So now the names of these parameters don't assist you. What would be displayed in label result 1 and label result 2? Pause the program and have a look. If we go have a look at the answer, then label result 1 displays 2.4 and result 2 displays 7.0. Why? Let's have a careful look. So in the program, line 23, num 1 stores 12. The procedure calculates something is called. That's by value num1, so this 12 is copied in that variable. And I've got by reference result 1 and result 2. So result 1 calculates 12 divided by 5, stores the answer 2.4 in result 1, which stores it actually in this variable over here, 2.4. Line 14 calculates 5, subtract 12, gives you minus 7. But then we call a function absolute to convert any number that gets as a parameter to a positive. So that converts it to 7. Store the result in result 2. So now when control returns, result 1 stores 2.4, result 2 store or displays 7. Okay carefully look at the program. Let's now have a look at the next result. 
Again, pause this program, have a careful look at the data that you think would be displayed and then compare it to my answer. And the program would display 10 in label 1, 2.5 in label 2 and 11 in label 3. Why? So line 24, 11 is assigned to number 1. Then on line 10 when we go to the function it gets the 11 for number 1 as a value parameter. Result 1 and result 2 is sent as reference parameters. But the first thing that now happens in the program after the constant that's declared is that the value in number 1 is overwritten. So number 1 now stores 5. Five times two would be ten. Five divided by two would be two point five. And these results are returned. But number one, the data is not returned. So after the end of the program, when control comes back to the main program, result one stores ten, result two stores two point five. Result 1 or number 1 stores 11. Let's see if you can follow if we go have a look at the values. So if I repeat the processing steps, line 20 and 21 will declare the variables. Line 24 stores 11 in num1. When the line 27 executes and the procedure is called, num1's value is copied, result1 and result2 refers to the variables declared by button calculate. Line 13 executes next, so this stores 5 in number 1. Line 14 executes next and line 15 and this will store 10 and 2.5 in result 1 and result 2. Soon as end sub is reached, all the data would be deleted. So all three of these formal parameters are deleted. And thus the program returns here to the data, num1 stays as it is. It was sent as a copy only. Result 1 and result 2 has got the right data, will be displayed. Okay, program 4. And now we again have something that happens. What would be the result of this program if you pause and have a careful look at the program? So, in label 1, 4 is displayed, in label 2, 40 would be displayed, and label 3 displays 22. If you have a look there, line 13 takes num1, 22, divided by value. So, if we take a calculator, we say 22 divided by 5 it would be 4.4 but this value is converted to an integer so it would store 4 only in num1 so num1 equal to result line 14 will store 4 in result and 4 times 10, 40 in result 2 and those would be the values that's displayed and again 
num1 was sent as a value parameter so the change in the change data is not returned control comes back to num1 that stores 22 the last program and now have a careful look there's a huge catch in this program careful careful look do you think you've got the answer careful look at the underlined parameters the sequence of the actual parameters and four formal parameters are different it's not the same the program is going to display 17 in the result 1 label and 27 in the result 2 label I hope you found the problem and the error let's go have a look let me assist okay so if I do a program trace then so the call that lists result 2 as the second actual parameter will use result 1 because it is the second formal parameter and thus result 1 points to the variable called result 2 in memory and vice versa so now when the program executes line 13 will take 22 plus 5 and store that in the result 2 variable and it's in the end after the program returns going to display 27 in the result 2 label what am I trying to do confuse you no I'm trying to show you how easily it is for first years for beginners to make mistakes and to then not know what caused the mistake be extremely careful with the sequence of the parameters because it's the sequence and not the names that gets used thank you